welcome. If you guys are looking for the, uh, the million dollar cleaning company masterclass, uh, this is it. So as people start rolling on here, I'll just uh, start talking and uh, then we'll get into it today. So hopefully you guys are excited about this and uh, yeah, man, this, it's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. So this whole, this whole idea started a couple weeks ago when I did a, a Zoom like this, just explaining about how we were building our cleaning company. And then at the very end of it, I decided that uh, I said, hey, like, I want to just mentor and, and, and coach somebody absolutely free. And uh, I had, man, I had a lot of people who, uh, who reached out to me about that. They even filled out an application, they applied. And I, I got on probably 10 calls with people. And through all those calls, I, uh, I came to the conclusion that I just couldn't pick one person. I just couldn't help one person. And so that's where this idea of the master class really came from. It came from the idea of uh, that I wanted to help more people. And so I figured I'd put together a master class and walk through a series of trainings like this, and then really helping somebody be able to either take an established cleaning business and help grow it to a million dollars, or if somebody's just getting started, help start it from scratch and uh, build it to a million dollars. So that's kind of what this whole master class is about and kind of the reason why it came together. So um, you guys are up and on here. I see that we've got some people's on here. Uh, can't really see how many we have, but if you guys want to, let's get a little little engagement in the chat here. So if you guys want to type in the chat kind of where you're from, uh, how'd you get here? If you guys have a cleaning business, or are you looking to start a cleaning business? And then once we, uh, we get some activity in the chat, let's make sure everybody knows that I'm here, everybody can hear me. Then, uh, then we'll get rocking and rolling here. So, yeah, Katie, Katie is here, my wife. She's she's, she's my better half. Um, yeah, if you guys, uh, we'll start getting that chat a little bit here. See see what's crack a lacking. See what's see where everybody's at. Shells from Florida, amazing, amazing, amazing. We actually are in uh, in Mesa right now, so we're we're dodging the Bozeman winter. And we're experiencing the beautiful Mesa, Arizona winter right now. So that's fun. Yeah. Rhea definitely is coming from the furthest place. She's coming from uh, she's coming from the Philippines. It's amazing. Cool. Okay. Looks like we got some people's in here. So Michelle, congratulations on launching cleaning business. It's amazing. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start. Rolling on here, everyone is going to uh, to get access to this recording. So if you guys can't make it for the whole thing, totally cool. Uh, there'll be a recording at the end of it, but uh, there's gonna be some really cool nuggets in here. And again, this is just lesson number one. And so hopefully you guys are ready to uh, to get bombarded with lots of information, lots of breaking beliefs, and really just feel inspired to actually take action and uh, turn this business into something that you're excited about and something that uh, will truly transform your life and the people around you. So yeah, if you guys have questions, you guys can light up the chat. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's get rocking and rolling. So this is building a million dollar cleaning company with zero cleaning experience. Number one, lesson number one. So um, you know, there's a lot of information out there leading to so much confusion. Uh, more confusion than clarity, right? And so if you're concerned with like wasting both time and money on your business, I'll tell you what, you're in the right place. Because what my goal here is to show you how to minimize your downside of losing both time and money while elevating your upside of increasing your time and your resources such as money. And so there's lots of big companies, lots of big entrepreneurs out there that make you think that you need a ton of capital or you need years of experience, or even like an MBA to be successful in business. But I can tell you, like, that ain't true. Now, entrepreneurship is freaking hard, right? Whether it's the economy, whether it's finding good help, or whether it's government regulations trying to tell you what to do, like, there will always be obstacles and challenges that will be in the way of you creating a successful business. But I'm telling you what, like you're here for a reason, right? Because there's something about this that you love, right? You love the challenge. You love being told you can't do it. Um, like there's a spirit inside of you that was meant 
for this, right? It was meant to be challenged. Um, and if you're someone like me, like you serve a bigger purpose than just by getting by, like living a life of mediocrity is not okay. And so the goal of this masterclass is really to help two types of entrepreneurs, okay? So, so really listen up here. Number one, for established cleaning business owners, like you will learn how to run a business that isn't dependent on you to either clean or sell, right? That still allows you to put at least 25% of all revenue in your pocket, which means if you make $100,000, you'll put at least $25,000 of profit in your bank account, okay? Now, if you're a startup cleaning business owner, like you're going to learn exactly what it takes to actually launch a cleaning business, even if you have zero experience with either business or with cleaning. And so my goal for this masterclass is to really highlight the opportunity to create a path to financial freedom through the vehicle of owning a cleaning business. Now, over the last two years, I've been very fortunate and very blessed to build a cleaning business that is on pace right now to do over $100,000 per month. And I spend less than 10 hours a week in this business. Uh, and it's really helped us in the Macalus, especially to buy over $10 million of real estate up to this point. Now, if you had told me that, like just a few short years ago, like I would have laughed at you, right? And in fact, like it was a little over two years ago, December of 2020, Katie and I, we were on our morning walk and we were actually, we're in Austin, Texas. And we had just started our cleaning business six weeks earlier in Bozeman, Montana. And I remember going on this walk and telling Katie that I believe that this business would be a million dollar business. And I just had so much hope and so much, and so much faith in this business, really, because like I needed it to work. And we both wanted to create a business that allowed us both the financial and time freedom to live like our best life, right? Now, up to this point, we had been running a fitness business for seven years. And while it had some success, I just felt like we were swimming against the current. Like there was so much freaking effort that constantly required our attention, right? It was hard to sell clients into our personal training facility. It was hard to keep the clients in our personal training facility. It took an enormous amount of effort. And really the result we were selling took a long time to get there. And so the value equation that we were, that we were giving to our, our prospects and our clients, like it was just against us. And so after I started exploring the idea of cleaning business, I saw the opportunity like right away. Like the value equation compared to the fitness business and the cleaning business, it was like, it was really flipped around. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with the value equation, there's four questions that every prospect asks themselves, okay? They ask, how long is it gonna take for me to achieve this result? How much effort is required of me? What's the likelihood of me actually achieving this result? And how impactful will it be upon me achieving the result? And so if we take this value equation, we look at that through the lens of fitness. You guys can think about this, like how many of you guys in here actually like have tried to lose weight or want to lose weight, right? Everybody, right? And so like, how long does it take for you to achieve that result? Like your whole life, right? Like it's a constant battle. Like, like there is no certain stop. Uh, how much effort is required of me? Dude. Like so much effort. You got to change how you eat. You got to change uh, how you move your body. You got to change how you sleep. You, there's so many things you have to change in order for you to actually achieve a transformative result. Now, what's the likelihood of you actually achieving the result of transforming your body and losing weight and being able to fit into certain dress sizes and to certain clothes? Based on the math and the, and the data out there, it's really, really low, right? And even if you hit the goal, like the chance of you keeping it, the, the numbers go down even further. Now, how impactful will it be upon achieving the result of transforming your body? Like, it's everything. Like, it, it changes the way you perceive yourself. It changes the way you are perceived by other people. It changes your thoughts and your beliefs and your confidence and your ability to walk into a room and just, like, command that room. Uh, so it's very impactful. Only on one of those four things does fitness actually win. Now, on the other side of the coin, let's take this from a cleaning business example. Okay, so think about this from a, from a cleaning prospect who reaches out to you to say, hey, like, can you clean my home? Like, how long is it going to take for them to achieve the result? Like, if you have availability that day or maybe the next day, they can get the result, you know, relatively quickly. How much effort is required of your cleaning client for them to come home to a sparkling clean home without them having to do a thing? 
nothing, right? Outside of giving their credit card, there is no effort required of them. What's the likelihood of them actually achieving the result of coming home to a, a home that smells citrusy and fresh and clean and things are picked up? It's really dang good, especially if you have lots of testimonials and lots of five-star reviews. They, there's a lot of trust in that. And how impactful is it for somebody to come home to this feeling of peace and to feel calm when they walk into their house? It can mean everything to somebody on that on that day. It can be it can be it can be a game changer. And the fact that they can do it over and over again, man, it makes the cleaning business so impactful to so many people. And so once I understood these four questions, I understood how it related to the cleaning business. Like I was sold. Okay. Now. The problem was, was that neither me or my wife, Katie, we had any cleaning experience. We knew nothing about supplies, about products, about cleaning techniques. And I'll tell you what, we got humbled really, really fast. In fact, our second clean that we ever did, I remember being on the phone call with this gal on the sales, on the sales call, and she was telling me about her home. It was about 35 minutes away from our house. I remember putting it on Google Maps. Um, and she was explaining to me about the house. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, totally fine. And by the end of the phone call, she's like, Hey, like, by the way, do you have a four wheel drive vehicle? And I said, yeah, do I, do I need it? She was like, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of up in the mountains and very fortunate for us. It had just snowed a ton that night after I got off the call with her. And then we scheduled that thing for the very next day. And so I sent my, I sent my wife, Katie out on this wild goose chase. Now, it said it was 35 minutes, but that was without the snow. And that was without her getting stuck. And so it took her almost an hour to get up to this property. And she didn't have to put it in four-wheel drive, uh, but she ended up making it there. She spent probably three or four hours there, and it took another hour to get back home. And, you know, I asked her how everything went, and she's like, it was, it was hard. It was a lot of work. The place was a lot dirtier than, uh, than you had made it out to be in the notes. I was like, okay, cool. Right? My bad. Well, the very next day, I reached out to her, just asking her how the clean went. And all of a sudden, I just got a mirage of pictures of things that were not done, and my heart just sank. And uh, she was like, I didn't even know that somebody was here. Like, that's how bad this place is. And it was in that moment that I was like, shit. <laughs> well, maybe we got a little bit in over our head. Um, and so we didn't charge that gal for that clean whatsoever. And it was one of those first experiences like, okay, it's time for us to either get out of this business or figure out how to actually uh, run a cleaning business. And so thankfully my wife, she jumped all in. She joined tons of cleaning Facebook groups. She watched hours of YouTube and she started to find products and supplies and cleaning techniques that allowed us to at least be decent as far as the fulfillment of our cleaning service was. Now, once we actually figured out how to clean, we were able to actually utilize our strength, and our mastery, which was in the marketing and the sales and the leadership departments, right? And so our primary marketing strategy was using Facebook ads. And the reason why is because I just have had so much experience of spending quite literally hundreds of thousands of dollars making hundreds of campaigns for my fitness business. And so that was our primary way to to generate leads in that business. And so I just took what I knew in that experience and I put it over into this cleaning business. And I was very fortunate that the very first funnel I put up, it worked. And it's actually still the same funnel that we run to today. And it's still our primary marketing funnel that we use. Now, of course, we also use Google, Google services. Uh, we also use Google ads. We also use Craigslist as, as a ways for paid advertising. and to this day, we've produced over 2,500 leads. Most importantly, we've converted 850 of those leads into paying clients. And so if you do the math on that, that's like a 35% conversion rate, which is outstanding, okay? And right now, currently in our cleaning business, it's on pace to break that $83,000 per month mark, which is a million dollar run rate. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's pretty cool. But what's even cooler is that both my wife and I, like we have the freedom to live our best life. And that's what business is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you freedom. And so I spend, again, probably about an hour on the business. I spend probably a couple hours uh, a week just tweaking things and adjusting marketing campaigns. My wife spends less than 10 hours a week on the business. And currently we're in Mesa, Arizona. 
uh, for the winter. And our cleaning business is in Montana. And the fact that it's growing is, man, it's just a testament to the freedom that this business can give you, not only from a time standpoint, not only from a financial standpoint, but even from a geography standpoint. And so what's excites me the most though about this whole process and this whole system is that now I get to do what I truly love, right? The reason why I got into personal training, the reason why I owned a gym is because I love to help people. I love to see people transform. And while I thought my love was for fitness, my love was actually just truly for helping people and to sharing what I know and to give it to them so they can start to experience the same feelings that I did. And so that's what this is all about is for you to be experienced that same freedom. And so what we're gonna be covering in lesson number one, this masterclass is three frameworks. Okay, so these are the three frameworks that we're gonna go over tonight. So framework number one is gonna be how to force your way to a million dollar business while using just third grade math, okay? Framework number two is how to build an army of cleaners who will lay on a sword for you. And then framework number three is how to actually ethically steal my model in literally less than 10 minutes, okay? So if you guys are excited, let me know in the in the in the, in the chat. See, I see some people who are rolling on here. So put in the chat if you're excited to get down on these three frameworks. And without further ado, let's go ahead and let's keep diving in here. So framework number one: How to force your way to a million dollar cleaning business by using just third grade math. So our business it was stagnant around twenty five to thirty thousand dollars a month about seven months ago, okay? We had no clear direction. And because we had no clear direction, the thing just quit growing, right? A business is very much like a garden. If you're not going to plant, excuse me, if you're not willing to water the seeds that you planted, it will stop growing. And that's exactly what happened to our business. Now, I was frustrated because I just, I saw this for six months. Our business would just get kept on just sitting still. It just, it was not doing, it was not growing. It was not, oops, it was not continuing to, uh, to prosper. And I got frustrated. I was like, this, this, this thing can work. And through the frustration, I created this million dollar business model. I was like, hey, these are the numbers that we need to hit. And once I started to figure out exactly what we need to do, then I shared it. Once I understood it and I shared it with the team, all of a sudden everyone knew exactly what they needed to do. And lo and behold, the business started to grow. And so literally six months after I built this million dollar model that I'm about to share with you, like our business doubled, okay? And so the set number one is you gotta get clear on what you want to make a month. And so for me, from the very beginning, I knew I wanted to have a million dollar business. I wanted to make $83,000 every single month. Now, your goals might be different. Maybe you want to make 20 quid. Maybe you want to make 30K. Maybe you want to make 40 or 50, right? Maybe you want to make more. Maybe you want to make 100K. But you need to get clear on exactly what you want to make a month. Step number two, you need to find your KPIs, okay? KPIs stand for critical performance indicators. These are the numbers that if you hit these numbers, it will help you hit your big goal, which again is your revenue goal, okay? And so for me, I found out my KPIs were job ticket hours, they were the number of cleaners we had on our team, and the average number of job ticket hours that each cleaner did per week. Now, this was just on the cleaner side. I also came up with numbers for the acquisition side. So on the acquisition side, we need to actually hit a monthly, excuse me, a weekly revenue of $19,360 every single week. This would put us on pace for us to hit that $83,000 a month, or excuse me, yeah, hit $83,000 a month. Um, we needed our average revenue per clean to be about $200. We needed to do 96 cleans every single week. We needed to have 220 reoccurring clients, so people who are either committed to doing weekly cleans, bi-weekly cleans, or cleans every four weeks. And we needed to get nine new clients every single week. And so by hitting these numbers, this model allowed us to actually uh, hit $80,000 per month. And so again, set number two was to find the KPIs, and set number three was just to reverse engineer all those numbers. And so for you, your business might be different. You might, not, you, might, you might want less cleaners. You might want them to work more hours. Um, and so depending on your work week, like we only work five days a week. So we don't work on the weekends outside of a couple of short-term rental cleans. And so I love base everything on a five-day five cadence. Um, and so these are the numbers that when I figured out exactly what it was, I relayed this to our, 
to our team and every single week we tracked it, okay? And so in July 2022 is when I created this model, we were doing about $32,000 for the month and January 2023, which was just a couple of weeks ago, six months later, we did $64,350, right? And all we did differently was we got clear on where we were going. We figured out the key performance indicators that we needed to hit on a day-to-day -day and a weekly basis. And we reverse engineered those numbers and we went over it every single week. And so I also created what I call what I called a vision meeting. So inside this vision meeting, this sheet that I will share with you guys after um, after this training, like so you, so you guys get access to this this sheet as well. Um, I just we went over it every single week when we talked about our cleaning acquisition numbers or all the all our cleaners coming in. And then we talked about our acquisition numbers from our clients coming in. And we'll basically use those two things together to figure out, well, why aren't we hitting our numbers? And then from there, we're able to problem solve and say, oh, this is the problem. This is the problem. And because of that, we were able to double our business. And so sometimes it's just as simple as having a clear target, having clear metrics, and then focusing on it day in and day out. So that's framework number one. And again, you guys will get access to my million dollar gym model. And so you can take that and you can actually put in your numbers based on uh, based on your business and what your goals are. And you can do the same thing so that way you have clarity on what your goals are on a day-to-day -day, week-to-week basis. So you guys, you guys excited about that? Let me know in the chat. Let's get you excited just to have clear direction on exactly what it takes in order for you to actually hit your goals. Sound cool? Yes? Awesome. Amazing. Okay. So let's talk about framework number two. So framework number two is how to build an army of cleaners who will lay on a sword for you. So after a year of being in the cleaning business, we started to create some momentum. We had about six cleaners and we were doing about $20,000 a month and things were going, were going pretty good, right? We started to started to add more cleaners. We're starting to make a little bit more revenue. And then what seemed to be out of the blue we had four of our six cleaners just quit all on the same day. And I remember Katie, my wife, telling me this, and she came to me in tears and she was frustrated. And I could tell that she, she was not having it. And we were sitting at dinner time and we were talking about our day and you could tell she was stressed out and she started breaking out and crying. And she just basically told me, she was like, oh, I think we should quit this business, right? I think we should sell it. I think we should get out of it. I think we should do something other than run this business. Uh, and I remember that conversation very, very clearly. And I remember thinking to myself, like, yeah, this, this sucks. Maybe we don't know what we're doing, right? It's like, again, we, we got in over, over our heads again. It's like, to go from zero to 20 was cool, but going from 20 to, you know, 40 or 50, that's a whole nother ball game. And uh, I was like, should we quit, right? That, that, that thought came across my head as well. But I quickly push it out, right? I quickly push it out and realize that, you know what, this isn't, this isn't about the cleaners, right? This isn't their fault. This is our fault. I just had to figure out why it was our fault. And what I realized was, was that we had built, we had built a shitty culture. And in fact, we hadn't really built a culture whatsoever. And so when we decided that we were going to go forward with this business and go start with our two cleaners and build it back up, we decided we we're going to do things differently. We're not going to do the same things. We're just going to hire warm bodies. We weren't just going to bring on people who, who needed a job and who could, who could, um, who could fill in the roster and, and, and take, and, and take on cleans, but we actually wanted people who we liked. We wanted to be around people who we saw with, who we saw, who wanted to grow, who, um, who wanted just opportunity. And so the only way we have to do that is have actually created a culture of achievement. And so creating a culture of achievement takes four steps okay and the first thing is all about us and we had to write down our core values because when we figured out what our core values were then we knew what we were looking for in the people who we brought on because we wanted people who we liked we wanted to be around because ultimately like this is what it's about it's about not forcing yourself to be around people you don't like or to have or to point your fingers at people but it's like how do you find friends who you do business with right and as much as we think about you know having bosses employees relationship like ultimately like we're, we want to be around people who are more like us, right? And so a lot of that doesn't have to be necessarily with personalities, but core values have to be in alignment. 
And so Katie and I wrote down all of our core values and we came up with these core values that we have today. And so for us, you gotta be consistent, right? Always have to show up. You have to be service focused, right? You gotta get focused on serving our clients and each other. So everybody else on the team as well. Communication, you have to be able to have direct conversations with your um, superiors. So that means like with us or your manager and also with other cleaners, like there's no sugarcoating. Like we tell it like it is. You must be able to be flexible. Like hey, the cleaning business, there's so much change, whether it be clients canceling last second or having to put people on your schedule last second or, uh, or having another cleaner call out sick and you have to take over some of their cleans. Like you have to be able to adapt in an always changing environment. You must be accountable, right? You must actually take 100% responsibility. So, you know, if you're not making the money you want to make, like you must take responsibility for that. If you didn't do a great job at a clean, you have to go back and you got to fix it. You need to take 100% responsibility for that. And so um, the next core value is growing. You got to be growth oriented, right? You got to be able, you got to want to seek feedback. You got to be willing to take that feedback and apply it and actually become a better human being. And then integrity, right? If you say you do something, you got to follow through on it. And so we, we realized that those were our core values. And now those are the same core values that we look for when we hire people. And we not only look for them, but we explain to them, we share with them. This is actually part of our job description that they know exactly what our core values are. And so these core values, people who see these things are like, wow, I'm attracted to that. But also what it does even better is it repels away the people who are not consistent, people who only care about themselves, people who are afraid to communicate, people who like are like, they just want to show up to a job and they just want to get by, right? They don't want to take any responsibility and they definitely don't want to grow and they don't want to be in charge of themselves, let alone anybody else. And so that's the best thing it does is it repels those people, but it, it attracts the other people. And that's what makes this so, makes this culture uh, so fun to be a part of. Now, so that's the first step. You got to write down your core values. The second thing, is you actually create a mission, okay? And so what we did is we created a mission, um, a mission statement. And so our mission is to provide a consistent cleaning experience for the Bozeman community through our fast communication and ability to act quickly, right? That's what we set our, our foundation on and actually have a, a worksheet that's going to walk you guys through this whole process that I'm sharing with you right now. So if you're like, man, like, I like this. I like what I'm hearing. I just don't know how to do it. Like I'm gonna share a um, a template so that we actually can create your core values and create your mission statement. Okay. And the third thing we did is we created an identity, and so we started thinking about all the names that we could call ourselves. So think about this like a sports team. So if any of you guys watched Super Bowl last week, you saw that it was the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And so if you're a Chiefs fan, like you identify as a Chiefs fan, right? And so think about maybe the school you went to, whether it be the college you went to or the high school you went to, there was some sort of mask that went with it, which allowed you to identify yourself as, a, um, as somebody who represented that school. And so as a business, so many times we fail to, to, take, to take this concept and apply it to our business. And so what we did is we created our Sparkle Bosses, right? So we have our, our Bozeman Five Star Cleaning is our company name and our, our mascot or who identify as our Sparkle Bosses. And so... Everybody who comes on our team, they, they become a Sparkle Boss. And that's how we communicate to them in our, uh, our group chats. It's how they communicate on our team meetings. They're known as Sparkle Bosses. When it comes to signing their paperwork, like they are now a Sparkle Boss, right? And so uh, they get to like, take that identity. And so the cool thing about that identity is that when somebody comes in, maybe they've, maybe they've had, you know, they have, they have character issues that they have in their head or they have certain identities that they've had or certain beliefs that they have. And so when they're able to come into a new environment, they're able to give themselves a opportunity to change, right? They're able to change for the better. And so that's one thing we give people do is we give them the opportunity to create a new identity. So someone who is a high performer, somebody who does take responsibility, who's all those core values like earlier. And from that, we actually created a manifesto. And so this is something that we read on our team meetings. It's something that all the Sparkle bosses, they know what we stand for. And it also allows us to make decisions based on whether we need to hire somebody or fire somebody, whether we whether we have a, a decision that doesn't necessarily have a black or white answer, if there's maybe a gray answer, it's like we follow our core values and we look at the manifesto and says, what does the manifesto tell us, right? And so this is something that's really inspiring. When somebody reads us, they're like, oh my gosh, like this is really cool. Um, and they know that they're part of something different. And that's exactly what we're trying to provide is something different because ultimately 
people look at a cleaning tech position as an entry-level job, right? And that's why so many people, they, as employers, they see their, uh, their employees can constantly turn over. But if you're able to build a culture and you're able to give them something more than just a job, more than just making money, having them be part of something bigger, then all of a sudden your chances of keeping them longer goes way further. And so this is what our manifesto is and people get excited about this and they feel like a changed person, right? And so ultimately how you build a culture is you have rules, you have standards, you have a common goal, right? Our team knows what our goals are that we're trying to become um, a million dollar cleaning company. We have reasons why we're trying to do that. We, we, we face challenges together and we become stronger. We don't let, we don't let adversity separate us, but we let it bring it closer together. Uh, so if you've ever been part of a team, you've ever been part of um, any sort of group or community, like this is all, this is what you're building when it comes to building your, your cleaning culture. And when you have that, you'd be amazed at how people will do anything for you. Our very first cleaner that we hired, she's still with us today. Right, and she she went from actually starting out as our nanny, then to our, our cleaner, and then she went into a sales role, and now she's added into a, a managerial role, and she continues to evolve, and we continue to grow her and build her up, and I think that's what it's all about is being giving people opportunities, um, and so the key to that though is that you must have a big vision, you must have a big enough vision that you can include other people in it, but if it's just you, and you have like such small goals, it's hard for anybody else to be able to see themselves. In your vision if it's too small so how you build a culture is you build something big something bigger than just you so if you guys are excited about that like let me know again like this like that right there is it's everything that's how you dominate this business is you build a culture when you build a culture in this type of business uh you can grow this thing massively so um okay let's talk about framework number three right this is how to ethically steal my model in less than 10 minutes. So 2017, I signed up for a gym mentorship with this guy named Alex Tomosi. Now, some of you guys might know who he is. He's big on, on YouTube now. Uh, but in 2017, nobody knew who he was, including myself. And so my gym at the time, it was struggling. It was struggling. I made about $5,000 a month. Um, and when you own a gym business, unlike cleaning business, like I have an actual brick and mortar facility. I have lots of expenses that go with that. And I was making almost no money. Uh, when I say almost no money, I mean, I was making enough money just to pay my gym business bills and pay my personal bills. Uh, and this went on for nearly three years. And so after three years, I started to realize that what I was doing wasn't working. And so when I saw this ad come across for this, this uh, guy named Alex Ramosi and his, and his company called Gym Launch, I was like, okay, well, we'll see what it's all about. And so I remember getting on a phone call with, with him and I was sitting in Katie's, um, her bedroom at the time we were not married. We were just like, we were just dating at the time. And it was 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. And he started to explain to me about his perfect gym model and explain to me to his offer and how we he got clients in the door and then what, what he did once I got in the door, how you sold them. And I just was like getting so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is it. Like, I see, I see the path. Like, this is what I've been missing for the last three years. And then he told me how much it cost. And um, I remember sitting there and the, the question he asked me before he told me the price was, are you ready for the sticker shock? And I just kind of like, oh no. And I said, sure. And he said it was $10,000. And my heart just sank in. I sat quiet on the on the phone for it seemed like an eternity, but it was probably like thirty seconds. And um, I, I at that moment I contemplated. I was like, "Man, can I do this myself? Right? Or is this like that moment? This is this is one of those moments that is going to transform my life." Um, and I said two words that like changed my life forever. I said, "Fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> let's do it um and i did and uh i made the commitment to join his program and i invested my last ten thousand dollars with him and when i say my last ten thousand dollars like that ten thousand dollars wasn't even in the bank because i was so afraid of losing it i had it underneath my pillow in a crown royal bag that i slept <laughs> that i slept with because i was like so afraid of losing this like, last ten thousand dollars that i'd saved up um and um man 
I was just, at that point I was committed. I was committed to doing exactly what he said to do because I had no, uh, no backup plan. I had like, that was all, that was all the money I had. So like, I had to make this work. I burned the boats. And so, although I was super uncomfortable, like I had to trust him. I had to, and I was very fortunate. Um, I went from doing about $5,000 a month to that very first month, I made $50,000 and my life completely transformed. And uh, man, that was like a huge moment in, in my life. And one of the biggest reasons was, was because I just trusted the process and I did what he, he had perfected over the course of many, many years and it just worked, right? And so when it comes to the cleaning business model, like what we have been able to build with this, it just works, right? And we've been able to utilize a lot of what we learned from prior businesses and be able to put it in the, in the cleaning business. And so this is my model, right? And so um, there's lots of other business models out there. There's different gurus out there. There's different claim memberships that say do this or versus do that. But uh, rather, ultimately, I'm just going to tell you what my model is. And, you know, if you want to go faster and you want to have less decision making, you want to focus on, on the big things, then this is how we do it. And I would suggest this is how you do it as well. And so this is our org chart, right? This is our Bozeman Five Star org chart. And so we have a couple of job descriptions. We have our CEO, we have our COO, we have our board, we have our GM, we have marketing, we have recruiting, we have sales manager, we have customer support manager, we have cleaning tech manager, we have a training manager, we have cleaning techs, we have customer support specialists, and we have a salesperson. Okay, so these are all the roles that we have in our in our in the self-made model. Okay. Now, as you if you actually look here closely, you'll see that under these positions, there's actually there's multiple names. So not each person. It has, has one role, but some of these people actually have multiple roles. Uh, and now the bigger your company gets, the more of these roles can be individualized. But in the very beginning, like if we, like when we first started this, like Katie and I were doing everything. Uh, and so if we plugged all these things in here, you would have saw that I was the CEO and the COO. I was the general manager. I was the, the cleaning tech manager. I was the support manager. I was the sales manager. I was uh, the recruiter and Katie was the cleaner. Um, and that's kind of how we started out, right? And then as we started to elevate ourselves, we started to replace our names on this org chart with other people, right? And sometimes other people, they um, got more opportunity and they got, to they got to replace us on different um, names on the org chart as well. And so that's the kind of the key to this whole process is to continue to replace yourself on the org chart. And you can see now that I am outside of the org chart. I'm actually on the like I'm still the C, I'm still a CEO, but I'm also a board a board member, which means I don't have any day to day role inside the company. Um, and so this is what I call the self made model. And when you have this model, man, it just allows you to see what the end looks like. And again, it goes back to clarity. Like the, the clarity you get on where you're going it becomes easier to do the hard work up front. It, it's easier to go through the pain and the challenges of growing a freaking business, right? It's it's a lot of pain. It's it's very much like giving like like having a baby and when we had our, our very first uh, or, excuse me when we had our second child Lainey like, like my wife Katie she was pregnant for nine months and she uh she got she had to go through all the challenges and the obstacles of being pregnant and she got bigger she got uh, more lethargic she got tireder and there was no result right until about nine or ten months in when all of a sudden our youngest daughter was born, then all of a sudden we got the result. We got the result of like, oh my gosh, these nine, 10 months, they became worth it because now our daughter became born. But that was just another season, right? And the next season was now we had to keep this thing alive, right? And we had to, we had to nurture it. We had to grow it. And we had to get it from being born to about the toddler years, which are about two years old. And then toddler years from two to now, she'll be four in about a, about a month. Like those, that's a whole nother transition. And we also have a, a 13 year old daughter as well. And so like, I know those different seasons from four to, you know, nine or 10 years old, like there's different seasons and your business will also have different seasons. And so just understanding that when you're able to see what it looks like when your kid is 18, you can look, you can look at it from that point of view. You can see how you want to parent your child. Same thing is with your business. When you look at your business of like what it looks like when it's complete, you can start to um, see who needs to replace you in certain roles. So this is the self-made model org chart. Again, you'll have access to this as well. And so when it comes to self-made model, there's a couple big decisions that you need to make, right? 
And so, so we're gonna talk about a couple of these decisions, but a few of this, but a few of these big decisions are like the services offered. And so what we offer, we offer residential deep cleans, we offer residential maintenance cleans, we offer move out cleans, we offer we offer small office cleans, we do vacation rental cleans sparingly. So before I touch on vacation rental cleans, you also notice that we don't do commercial cleans. Um, we don't do we don't do construction cleans, we don't do like hazardous cleans. Um, and the reason why is because like we're just not equipped for it and we want to stay focused on what we're good at, right? And what actually makes us the most money. And I put vacation rental cleans in here sparingly. So in the very beginning, uh, I think people really love the idea of the vacation rental cleans because technically they're easy to find and easy to get, but they are a big pain in the butt because of the time allotment that you have to dedicate towards vacation rental cleans. Like you only have from about 10 or 11 to about two or three to get it done. They must be done that day. And a lot of times if you don't have the staff to be able to, to, to cover these vacation rental cleans, then who ends up doing it is, is potentially you, right? And so what we found with our cleaning business, when we, when we service our short-term rental cleans, we own 11 short-term rental cleans in Bozeman, or excuse me, 11 short-term rental units in Bozeman, is that we kept on having to pull off our cleaners from their weekly cleans or their, or their, their reoccurring clients because we had a we had a staff member quit or call out or get sick, and we had to pull them off one of their normal cleans in order to get these ones done because they had to be done in a specific time frame. And also, in a even a, a worst case situation, my wife had to actually like go and she had actually had to go um, drop what she was doing and go clean um, because we had somebody call out sick or somebody forgot to to clean the property. Uh, and vacation rental cleans can actually be really tricky when you don't have a big enough staff. Um, and so the reason why I say that is because now that we have, now, now that we're floating between 10 to 12 cleaners, now it makes more sense for us to do vacation rental cleans. Now we're starting to look at actually picking up more, where up until probably about three or four months ago, we actually just would turn down all vacation rental cleans because they just were a pain in the butt. Um, so once you have a big enough staff, then vacation rental cleans can actually become really, really valuable and really, um, um, really prosperous. And on a second piece of that, if you actually can establish a relationship with a laundromat, which which we did as well, that they will pick up your 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 dirty laundries and they'll drop them back off, you can actually make even a little bit more money, and you can pass that cost on to the host. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's the self-made model. This is the model that we use. Our biggest thing that we focus on is how do we get residential maintenance claims? How do we get people on reoccurring, whether it be weekly, by weekly, or every four weeks? That's our that's our main goal. Everything else is just a feeder into those, into that primary service. Now, the next big decision you have to make when it comes to your model is, are you gonna provide cars for your employees or no? And so before, again, because we came into this industry without any cleaning experience or any really industry knowledge, uh, like having cars just didn't make any sense. I, I would ride a vehicle for a, an employee um, and so we don't do cars. And as I started to learn more about it, the people who are the most profitable in the cleaning business, they don't, they, they don't provide cars either. Um, and so not only is it just the upfront investment having cars, but then you have to run teams, which we'll talk about here in a second. You also have to probably do a wrap, then you gotta pay for gas, you gotta pay for insurance and all these other costs. And what we found is that our cleaners have no problem driving their own cars, right? And I'll explain how we're able to do that because we incentivize them differently and just allows us to uh, have less friction when we're able to bring on new client, new cleaners and not new new cleaners. So we don't have to have we don't have to go buy new cars. We can just bring on new cleaners. And so this has really helped us scale as fast as we have is because we don't have this big liability of having to provide cars to our cleaners. Now the next thing is solo versus team cleaning. And so this is something that we just had to learn the hard way. And then eventually uh, we learned that Team cleaning is great in theory, um, but when again, you have a cleaner who calls out or is sick or somebody who's fired or somebody who quits, then all of a sudden it messes the whole team up, right? And also we found out with, um, with solo cleaning is that it just allows people to make more money, give them more autonomy and allow them more personal responsibility. And so now we do a solo model. Uh, so all of our maintenance cleans, they are done solo. Now we will still do team cleans when it comes to like big move out cleans or deep cleans or initial cleans. Um, but when it comes to like a reoccurring residential cleaning, 
is always solo, right? And the, it gives the cleaners autonomy, allows them for a consistent schedule and for them to a, develop a relationship with the houses that, that they're going to. But also at the same time, if somebody does get sick or call out, we actually can, re, we can also put a different cleaner on there as well. Um, and so just again, it allows us the flexibility to continue to, to grow our business without having to be um, held down by having team two. Um, we, so in this case, we're only, we're only worried about how do we get one person um, to a clean, not having to get two people there. So another big decision you gotta make is uniforms versus no uniforms. And so again, I'm just, I always think about it from the standpoint of like, how do I create the least resistance? How do I get the most of them going? How do I create the least distractions? And we don't do uniforms, right? And so I know a lot of people do, they spend a lot of money on buying t-shirts for people and, and uniforms to have their, their company look professional when they walk into a house. And we have never done that. And I've never had a single client complain about them not showing up in a specific uniform or them coming in dirty clothes. Obviously like we have a dress standard, uh, but we don't have them wear a specific type of clothes. Uh, we do have aprons that that they that they that they can wear um, that have our, our logo on it. But outside of that, like it's just one less distraction, one less thing you have to worry about. If when you're trying to hire somebody, it's like, oh, do we have enough T-shirts? Do we like do we have enough uniforms to hire more people? And I think the less of those distractions you have, the faster you're able to scale and the more you're able to grow. And then another big decision is employees versus independent contractors. Okay. And so we've actually done this both ways in our fitness business. And then when it came to our, um, our, our clean business, we knew exactly what we wanted to do. And so there's pros and cons to both. The, the pros to being an independent contractor is that it's much easier to hire people um, because you don't have to set up unemployment insurance. You don't have to like collect their, their, their state and federal taxes. Uh, you don't have to do workman's comp. Uh, you can generally pay them a little bit more and then they become responsible for their, their own taxes. Now, the con to hiring the contractors is that they must know how to do their own taxes. They must have an independent contractor license to be legit. Um, and another con is that most people who are cleaners, like they don't want to have to deal with having to, having to set up their own taxes and do their own QuickBooks. And they'd rather actually just pay um, their 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 fair share in taxes and just be a W-2 employee. And so that's what we decided that we were going to do when it comes to this business model is we were going to do W-2 employees because it gave us number one, more control. And we could, and we could dictate whether like how much somebody worked and that they showed up to team meetings. Um, and we had control over the, over the end clients as well. And I think that's one of the, like, the biggest reasons is that there's other business models out there that literally teach you to only do the marketing and sales. And you literally go find independent contractors to do all the fulfillment. But to me, the business model, the reason why it makes this business model so intriguing and so sexy is that you have reoccurring clients who will continue to pay you for you. Like as long as you continue to service them, potentially forever. And the reason why I say that is because we actually have a client. Her name is Susan Bianchini. She was the second or third person I ever, like I signed up. So again, I only did sales for about a month and I signed her up. She's like our second or third person. And she is still with us today. I always see her commenting on our Facebook ads I see her on the schedule and she's one of the, one of the um, clients who just like meandered to my heart because I signed her up, right? Uh, but she's been with us for a couple of years now. And that's really the value in this, in this company is that you can have a client that continues to pay you over and over and over again. Um, so that's why we choose the W2 model. Uh, and also from like a risk standpoint is that depending on how you actually manage your cleaners, uh, like if, if the state, for example, deems that the people that you've been paying as an independent contractor, they should have been classified as a W-2 employee, they can actually take you and they can sue you for all those back taxes. And so uh, I've actually, I've actually um, heard stories of somebody who they had a business very similar to a cleaning business where they hired all their employees as independent contractors. And then one of the, one of the independent contractors went down to file unemployment and uh, they're like, well, you can't file un unemployment, like you're an independent contractor. And then guys like, well, I've been an employee for this guy for the whole time. Like he pretty much treats me like an employee. Like I don't have any other income. I don't have, I don't have a job from anybody else. And so the state did an investigation 
on him and his company. And so not only did he lose that, that fight against that one uh, employment case, but then they started digging into more research and found out that he had like 10 years worth of other employees and he ended up having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in back taxes ended up just putting him out of business. And so there's another risk as well. Uh, the reason why I like to play it safe uh, and I go with W2 employees. And one of the final things we're talking about is hourly pay versus commission pay. So um, again, we did hourly pay for a while. And then when we, when we submitted, when we transitioned over to commission pay, like it changed everything for us. And so what it did is that it, it put us on the same side of the table as our cleaners. And so what I see a lot in hourly pay is that as, as, the business, as a business owner, you're always trying to limit how much they, how much, how much the cleaner gets paid because you, you start their, their, um, their time clock, like when they show up to the office or when they show up to the clean, do they clock out when they're done with the clean, when they get back to the office, do they get drive time, all these things. And we solve all those problems by simply just paying our cleaners based on commission of the revenue generated. We paid them a, we paid them a good commission. And so again, like you, you get access to our commission rates and our tiered system. But when we're able to do this, all of a sudden the, the, the questions about, do I get paid uh, for drive time? Um, what about gas? Those are things that like they went away because everything was rolled into this idea of commission pay. And we also, um, we, we get lots of tips because we ask for tips and those tips go 100% to our cleaners. Um, and so that's our way of saying like, hey, like, you have you're responsible for your gas you're responsible to use your own car um you don't get paid for like you don't get paid to drive but what you do to get paid is you get paid a lot of money to actually clean the home right and it also incentivized them to actually do a good job because they were only paid by the room generated if there was a correction clean or they had to go back and fix something and there was no more money generated like they didn't get any more money to do that so it also incentivized them to actually do a great job as well and so when we changed from hourly pay to commission pay it really changed everything so um and so that's why the self-made model, like, that's why it's so valuable, right? And you can literally steal what I've been doing. And you can take this into your business and you will be successful. You don't have to make the decision of like, well, should I have cars or should I have the uniforms or should I do hourly or should I do, um, should, should I do commission pay? Should I do independent contractors versus should I do W2 employees? Like you can just take my model that's work and will continue to work um, and it will make you successful. So. Ooh, it's a lot of stuff we're just going over. So you guys excited? Is that, uh, yeah, lots of scary stuff. So um, hopefully you guys got a lot of value from this. And let me ask you a question though. Like just, if you were able to follow the framework that I showed you in framework number one, and you just had clear numbers to hit, right? You have clarity. And then you built an army of employees, of cleaners, of office people who would literally lay on the sword for you. And then you followed a proven business model. Like, do you actually think you can be successful? Let's see it. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat, right? And so I'm sure a lot of you guys, like you guys are excited about what we just went over, right? Some of you guys are probably feeling maybe a little overwhelmed, which is totally fair. But I want you guys just to understand that this is just lesson number one of eight. So you have eight lessons total, right? And so for the majority of you, like great, right, we're going, it'll be just perfect, right? Just perfect for you to be able to create a successful cleaning business or to grow your cleaning business, okay? But I'm sure there's a few people out there who want some more attention. They want some more support and they wanna go faster. And so if that's you, then I actually do have a pretty cool offer for you. So this is something that I talked with my wife, Katie, about, and um, we decided to just th th throw this out there. Again, whether somebody takes it or not is irrelevant. We just, if somebody wanted more, they wanted more support, they wanted, uh, they wanted to go faster, they wanted more like one-on-one -on -one attention, then this is kind of what we came up with. And so what we're doing is we're providing the opportunity for about five people, right? Not for about, but for five people to take part in a unique experience that I call decade in a day. And so what is decade in a day? It's essentially an opportunity for you and I to sit down like hip to hip for an entire day and build out your perfect cleaning business. Where And whether you're just literally starting your cleaning business or whether you have an existing business, um, like 
this this the second day is like it's so powerful it's so fun and so we will go through the process of creating a perfect business model and building a culture just like we talked about tonight okay um you will also leave that deck in a day with the market with your marketing systems running so think about your facebook ads going your google local services ads going your google ads going and your craigslist ads all rocking and rolling um this will we will ensure that your pricing we'll do the math on it to ensure that it actually allows you to hit a 25 percent profit margin you will have custom scripts for your sales uh for your conversion of initial cleans into clients uh for your lead nurture to get people actually on phone calls and i'm also gonna give you access to our live ported sales that we do for our team and so you actually get to hear actual sales that we do um with all of our clients you're also going to get like really cool client reactivation campaigns um and so if you do have clients in the past or if you happen to lose clients or you just have prospects that don't sign up right away then you're going to get cool reactivation campaigns that um will give you will give people opportunities to come into your business and either re-sign up as clients or to try your cleaning service you also leave this deck in a day with your structure to run your team, right? Uh, run your team's daily huddles, understand how to run a weekly meeting, and understand the structure and the framework to run a monthly team meeting, okay? You also get access to our hiring ads. So they're actually ads that we use that we've been using uh, man, since we started hiring people a couple years ago. You'll get our interview scripts, you'll get all of our onboarding paperwork, and again, we like like we record all of our interviews, so you get access to those recordings. You can watch my wife Katie, like how she interviews people and what and what we're looking for, and you get to see the literally like monkey see monkey do. It's so powerful, right? You also leave with like your clear KPIs and your critical drivers, so you know exactly what you need, all the numbers you need to hit in order for you to actually hit your goals, right? You get access to my vision sheet, which a lot, which is uh, what combines all these numbers together. Uh, you'll get access to a business intelligence sheet that will customize for you. So again, like we have our, our KPIs, um, but we also have our intelligence sheet, which is all our, all our critical drivers. So you see like on a day-to-day -day basis, um, when your job ticket hours, how much revenue you're billing per day, like what is your cost per acquisition? What is your lifetime value of your client? Uh, how much does it cost to you to acquire a client? What's your profit per new client? What's your attrition rate? Like there's so many numbers that once you know what they are, it allows you to just kind of push buttons and uh, to be able to say, oh, like this number is low, we got to figure out how to get this number up. And it gives you a, it seems like a cheat sheet in order for you to actually continue to grow your business. And uh, like I told you about six months ago, we started doing these vision meetings and we've recorded almost all of them. I didn't, I didn't record them right from the beginning, unfortunately, but uh, I think for the last like four months, I have all of them recorded. So you get access to those vision meetings. You actually can see our business where we, we were probably at, at that point, we were probably at like, you know, thirty-five or forty thousand dollars. You can see each week to week of us, you know, growing uh, to where we are now, like sixty-five, almost seventy thousand dollars a month. So, pretty cool as well. Um, and I just remember when I was like first trying to figure this out. Like I told you guys earlier, like it took me three years. I just kept on running into roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Uh, I didn't know how to grow my business. Like I just I didn't know how to do it. And so I've spent now hundreds of thousands of dollars in mentorships to piece all this together. Um, and so like basically what deck in a day is is like this is basically your chance to learn like 10 years of lessons of money mess ups, uh, lessons learned and experience. You can learn all this in one day. So um, now I'm only opening this up for about four or five people, right? Just to start with because like I was told many of you guys before, like my goal is to show you how to build a million dollar cleaning business, but I'm not willing to distract myself from actually hitting this $83,000 a month in my cleaning business, right? And so I'm not distracting myself with building another business. Like my goal is just to help you. And by helping you, I know that I will in turn um, hit my goal, which is $83,000 a month. And so five, I just thought was a good number. Uh, that Katie and I kind of came up with that would allow us to continue to provide more value for you guys who wanted more attention and wanted to go faster without distracting us from growing our cleaning company. Okay. 
And so I've done decade in the day before in our fitness business. And I'm telling you what, it's, it's life changing, right? It's it's super fun. I love, like, I love actually interacting with people in the flesh. And uh, when people get in my presence, uh, like, I feel like, I feel like I got you, right? And like, you just feel my energy. You feel, you feel that belief and I'm able to transfer that uh, where I can't, uh, I can't do that to the same degree as I can via a Zoom or a course or a training. Now, there's a cost to this, right? And so again, like you don't have to do this whatsoever. This is just an opportunity uh, for anybody who wants to do this, who, who does want to go to the next level. And so this decade today is going to cost 10 grand, right? And the reason why is just because $10,000 for 10 years of experience in one day, just you kind of all went together, right? And ultimately, like I, I did the math on this and, um, you know, for getting a perfect business model and getting all the things to go with it if you're not able to make ten thousand dollars on this day and all this training within your first six months then i did something wrong right there's no reason why you can't make an additional ten thousand dollars just by uh learning this process in the system um and so that's a really good roi it's like a 200 percent roi on your on your money if you make this back in six months but I wanted to make it a little bit sexier, right? Especially because this is the first time we're doing it for the cleaning business um, that I wanted to give the first side people a 50% discount, okay? So again, if you wanna be part of these first side people, uh, then back in a day, just gonna be $5,000, again, just for the first five people. So I'm making a pretty cool guarantee too, right? Again, um, if for some reason you don't make your money back in the first six months, you're not able to make that $5,000 back in your cleaning business, I will give you every single penny back, right? I will ensure, um, like, I want to give you the guarantee that like, I am by your side, I'm here to help you not only make that much money back, but like, like way more money than that. And again, for some reason, you're not able to make at least that $5,000 back in the first six months, like I will literally give you all that $5,000 back and I will continue to help you until you actually do make that $5,000 back, okay? Um, so the money is just a, a way for you to commit and for you to take action, but outside of that, like, I'm very fortunate. I don't, I don't need, I don't need your money. I just need you to take action. Right. So if you are interested in decade in the day, uh, and if you want the one-on-one attention and support and to go faster, then you can apply for the decade in a day. So, uh, oh, and as a really cool bonus, uh, because we have lots of short-term rentals and we have opportunities, uh, your lodging, when you come to this decade in a day, it will be absolutely free. Right. And your food will be free. So basically all you have to do is you have to get here, whether you fly here, whether you drive here, depending on where you're at, um, your lodging will be free, your food is free. So another cool bonus. So yeah, so to, to apply, um, oh, I actually don't have the link here. Let me, let me pull the link up here and I'll drop it in the chat. So if you guys um, want the opportunity to apply, go for it again, you absolutely don't have to. But again, if you wanna go faster, it's a pretty cool offer. And again, after the first five people, we are, um, we're gonna pause on it. So I'll put the, I'll put it in the chat. Also, if you guys are watching this as a recording, this will be um, in the recording, there'll be a link for you to apply. Uh, if you're watching the recording, whether you watch this, you know, later on, and if there's still spots, um, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely consider you. And so after you apply, we'll, we'll go to the application and my, my wife and I will hop on a call with you and we'll just get really clear on if we can help you or not. And if we, if we feel like we can't help you, then we'll, we'll, we'll take the next steps forward. And if for we can't help you, then, um, yeah, then again, like you get, you, 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 you get to stay part of this masterclass for free. You get, you get all the trainings that we do inside here absolutely free. Um, and so I just want you to know that if you do want that extra resources there, but like the training that we're doing inside here is really good. Uh, you guys saw it tonight, like, uh, it's, Super high level, not holding anything back. You guys get lots of lots of cool resources. Um, anyway, just super excited for you guys. And without further ado, um, I'm gonna stop my share here. I think if I can figure out how to do this. the The link is in the chat. And what time is it? So seven oh six. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll stay on here for a little bit longer, and uh, we'll do a uh, we'll do a little bit of Q and A. Also, if you guys haven't joined the the free Facebook group. So we're doing a Facebook group that allows you guys to kind of build build some relationships and to ask some questions, right? Like this is not just about me. Like I, I, I'm not planning to be the, um, 
the gruel on top of the hill. Like I want you guys to utilize each other. Some of you guys have, some of you guys know the answers and I, I'm not the one that you guys are gonna be, be dependent on to be your only resource. Um, that's actually not how I teach. It's not how I, it's not how I coach. Like, like my goal is for you to understand the decision-making process, to understand the filter. So you have the power to make a decision. Like, I don't want you to be dependent on me. Um, and so that's what this is all about is for us raising each other up. And again, not using me as the only resource, but using other people in here as well. And I will drop the link for that. Uh, Facebook group in the chat. So if you haven't joined the, the Facebook group, go ahead and make sure you join that Facebook group so you can um, you can ask questions. You can post in there if you have questions or post wins inside there. And where's it at? Here it is, right here. Okay, so there's the Facebook group. You can go in there, and if you haven't already, join the Facebook group. But I'll stay online for a couple more minutes. So if you guys do have specific questions about what we went over tonight. I'd uh, love to answer that. Otherwise, if we don't have any questions, then we can also just call it a night. And we can we can go do our thing and go get to work. Um, also, you guys should all have access to the membership site. And so, the membership site this that's where this recording will be. All the all the resources, all the all the uh, all the I don't want to call them handouts, but all the links and stuff will be on there as well. So, um, make sure you guys are inside the membership site. And then uh, get into the Facebook group, and then the uh, the link to join Decade and Day is up there as well. And so, yeah, I'll stay on here for a couple of minutes. I don't see any questions right now. So if you guys have any questions, post them in the chat. But this is your time to ask questions. And um, yeah. Okay. Yep. So when will the Decade and a Day take place? Um, it's going to all be dependent on both your schedule and my schedule. So basically, we should make it make sense. Um, I have the flexibility. Honestly, I could do it pretty much any day. And so at that point, it's probably going to just be on, on your flexibility. Um, and it'll be here in, in Mesa, Arizona. So if you guys do come from cold, cold weather places, um, then you get to come into Mesa and experience what winter is like down here in, uh, in, in Mesa. So. Uh, but yeah, it's all it's all custom based on your schedule. So, okay, Samir has a question. Yeah. So, at what point did you make your very first hire after specific amounts of clients, revenue, or something else? Great question, Samir. So, again, when you're able to look at this from the end in mind, then it allows you to really answer this question. So, like we knew that we wanted this to be a million dollar business, and so if you think about this from like what your goals are. Like, what is your end goal? Like, do you want to be a million dollar business? Do you want to be a cleaner? Do you want to be a salesperson inside this business? Like, what does it look like at the end of mine? And then really what you need to do is just map out your plan. And then you start to look at, okay, so here's my plan. You have your org chart. You see all the pieces and see what, what resources you have. So if you're doing this by yourself or if you're doing this with a spouse or you have, if you have somebody who wants to uh, start this business with you just as an employee, like what resources do you have access to? And so that's really the answer to your question is not a specific answer. It's just like what resource do you have access to, right? Um, and so again, like me, I never cleaned a single house my entire, like my, since we've owned this company, I've never cleaned a, a, an entire house. Like my wife, Katie, she cleaned for the first six weeks just because um, again, like those, those are the resources that we had. And then when we, when we uh, went down to Texas for the whole month of, of December, we utilize our resource that we, we had a nanny and we transitioned from being a nanny to our very first cleaner. Um, and then my wife jumped in from doing a cleaner, then she became the salesperson. And then I became the board member at that time. And again, I still had a fitness business at, at that point. I was still buying and investing in real estate. So my, uh, like my day-to-day -day operations went towards running my fitness business and doing real estate. And then my role became an advisor really quickly to, to the cleaning business. And so answer your question is like, see what the end looks like and then develop a plan, right? And ultimately like, think about think about the end in mind when you make the decision, what you do today. And I think when you're able to do that, it becomes really clear on when you should hire your first person. So that could be right away. It could maybe take you, maybe you have that plan for three months or six months or three weeks, but ultimately it's gonna be your plan, so. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, Cause again, like everyone has different amounts of 
money in the bank. Like if you have a couple, you know, if you have thousands of dollars in the bank account, maybe you can, you have a, a burn rate where you can go three or four months without having to make money. But if you like are investing your last couple thousand dollars, maybe you need to be the one who cleans for a while. Um, so again, you guys should understand what your, what your end goal is, what resources you have currently access to. And then at that point, you just create a plan. And ultimately like just you having a plan is what's the most important piece of the whole thing. Because once you start to take action, then all of a sudden the plan starts to like show itself and then you can make adjustments and you can pivot. So. Hopefully that answered your questions in there. Um, okay. Any other questions? Well, let's, let's let's take on a couple more questions here, and then we'll call it good. And then uh, we'll see you guys back here next week. Here, so we got we got one more question. Then we have one more question here before we hop off for tonight. Okay. Looks like we're all questioned out. Must have done an amazing job. So again, if you guys got value from this, let me know. You guys can put in the chat. Again, like I just see, I don't even see any faces right now. I think everyone's camera's off, but I see people in the uh, in, in the participant room. I see a couple people live in the chat, but if you got any value from it, let me know. You got some value from it. Uh, yeah, get into the Facebook group. If you know anybody else who wants to start a cleaning business or if you're friends with the cleaning business owners, like definitely feel free to share this with them get them uh, part of this master class. Again, this is lesson just number one or number eight. And uh, man, I'm excited just to share this with you guys. And I like my goal is to see you guys either start cleaning businesses and grow your businesses to twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month in your first year. Or if you have an existing cleaning business you're already at, you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars, I'm gonna I want to uh, be on this journey with you to watch you grow it to 40, 50, 60, a million dollars a year, um, or you know, eighty thousand dollars a month. Um, and so I'm yeah, just, just excited for you guys. Appreciate you. And uh, happy Thursday. We'll be back again next Thursday. So th this will be a Thursday cadence. Uh, so if some reason you guys can't be on here, it'll be recorded. But uh, yeah, share it with anybody else who you think can get value from it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, drop it in the Facebook group, get in the Facebook group. Uh, other than that, if you want to apply for Decade in a Day, um, love to have a conversation with you about it. So happy Thursday. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>